First off, I would like to start by saying I am not condoning or promoting the use of any illegal mind-altering substances. This video is solely just me reporting my experience. So with that being said, microdosing psychedelics is nothing like tripping, where you hallucinate and can't function properly. Microdosing is the act of taking a sub-perceptual amount of substance. In other words, you don't actually feel any effects. This dose is usually about one-tenth to one-twentieth of the dose one would take if they wanted to take a typical psychedelic trip. Microdosing does not impair normal everyday functioning, and in fact, people who regularly microdose usually do so to boost their productivity in everyday life as people who microdose report benefits such as improved focus, increased energy, enhanced creativity, increased mental clarity, and more. Many people also microdose just to increase overall mood and outlook in life, and can also be used as a method of combating mental conditions such as depression and anxiety. Someone who is microdosing for purposes of increasing mood and happiness might look back on their day and realize it was much better than normal. Or a person microdosing for productivity may look back on their day and realize how much more they got done than usual. This is a graph of a Canadian survey conducted in 2018 reporting the reasons why people microdose. Now this is a graph of drawbacks or concerns some people have when it comes to microdosing. At the end of this video, I will be going over each of these benefits and drawbacks depicted on the graphs, and I will tell you whether I experienced them or not. So for the next 30 days, I will be microdosing psilocybin, which is the active ingredient in magic mushrooms. My main motivation for doing this is in an attempt to realign my habits and overall headspace that I've let slip somewhat in quarantine. The two most popular ways of microdosing are the Fadiman method and the Stamets method. The Fadiman method is one day on, two days off. So on day one, I would take a microdose, and for the next two days, I would not dose. And then on day four, I'd microdose again. The typical Stamets method recommends dosing for five days in a row, and then taking two days off. However, I've heard recently that Paul Stamets, the one who created the Stamets method, changed his recommendation to four days on, three days off, and several people online appear to prefer this recommendation, so I will be using this method, taking 0.1 grams of psilocybin mushrooms for four days in a row, and then taking a three day break, and I'll be repeating the cycle for an entire month. I believe this method could be more effective, as it would help prevent tolerance buildup, and I'd better be able to see the contrast between the effects of dose days and non-dose days. I'll be doing check-ins every few days to give you guys updates on how it's going. I'll also give an in-depth analysis of how it's going halfway through on day 15. And then afterwards, I'll do a conclusion of how the whole thing went after day 30. Stay tuned. Alright, what's up guys? Thank you for tuning in to this 30-day microdosing challenge that I am doing with myself. Um, I have only ever gone over psychedelics from the tripping aspect and the kind of the spiritual and personal development, um, consciousness development aspect. I've only kind of gone over that so far on this channel, but um, I've completely neglected the microdosing and productivity aspect of psychedelics. Um, so this morning I ingested 0.12 grams of psilocybin. This is a typical microdose and a lot of people who microdose, they use this to experience creativity enhancement, you know, just be more in the present moment, be more focused, um, be more productive. That's kind of the main thing. People who have depression, microdosing has been known to help greatly. People who have anxiety, microdosing is known to help greatly. What I'm trying to get out of this is just kind of get my daily habits and routines just really intact because I've let myself slip a lot in quarantine and I'm sure a lot of us have too uh, because we don't really have structure in our lives in quarantine. So I've started going to bed at like three in the morning every night and waking up at 11, which is a bad habit. Um, I literally tried going to bed at one in the morning two nights ago and I couldn't because I wasn't even tired. So I'm kind of worried that once structure in my life comes back that I will be completely out of whack. And also I, a lot of times I just can't focus to save my life. I get so distracted so easily and I'm hoping this microdose can just make me have a higher motivation to just get things done. And you know, I'm not really having like super high hopes for this. You know, I'm, I'm a believer in psychedelics, so maybe I am 
more susceptible to the placebo because honestly right now I dosed this morning and I feel fantastic. I am in nature right now, I'm on a hike and I feel so much in the present moment right now, like so much more than usual. And like I said, uh, I don't know if it's a placebo or not, but I, I feel so amazing right now. All right guys, so it's about two in the morning and just looking back on my first day of microdosing, um, it was a really, really productive day and I, I felt fantastic uh, pretty much throughout the entire day. Um, this is uncommon for me in quarantine actually. Uh, oftentimes in quarantine, we can just fall into this trap of doing nothing all day and if you don't if we don't get out and do stuff, um, we can some of us can feel kind of depressed and you know I've definitely had my times of that in quarantine. Uh, but today I just felt like it was really good. I felt very, very in the present moment. Um, and I got a lot of work done. I wrote like a six page essay. I got a bunch of other schoolwork done and I'm going to read before I go to bed here. It has been a very productive day. Um, by far, one of the most productive days I've had in quarantine so far. Um, whether it's a placebo or not, we'll see. Only time will tell um, because I'm a strong believer. Um, so I'm more susceptible to the placebo. But um, yeah, this is my first dose day and I'll be updating you guys in a couple days. All right guys, so I am on day four of this microdosing experiment that I'm doing with myself. So which means that these past four days I have dosed and which means the next three days I will not dose. So it'll be very interesting to see the contrast between the dose days and the off days. But these past four days have been fantastic in terms of my mood and just my overall outlook on things. You know, in quarantine, we don't get to see our friends. We don't get to go out. We don't really get to do anything. So we can end up feeling pretty shitty but um, that's not how I felt at all. I felt fantastic. I've gotten so much schoolwork done. I've gotten so much work for the channel done. Um, it's been awesome. Um, I definitely think this microdosing thing is legit and it works, um, but yeah, stay tuned for future updates. This is only day four. All right, guys, so I am seven days into this 30-day experiment. Um, so these last three days have been off days so I have not dosed and it is incredible the contrast between the dose days and the not dose days. I was significantly less energetic, um, significantly less productive and just had a much worse mood overall. You know I didn't have like a terrible mood or anything. You know this is day seven and um, day seven was worse than days five and six and day six was worse than day five. I think that's just kind of the come down from the, you know, the afterglow effect, I guess. Because, you know, on day five, maybe you still have a little bit of psilocybin in your system, and then day six, it's less, and day seven, it's none. So it to totally makes sense that it um, lessened each time, but next four days are on days, so look forward to that, and we'll keep you guys updated. Um, we'll probably give you guys an update in about a week or so. All right, guys, so I am halfway through this microdosing challenge and i am very pleased with how it's going so far please enjoy this video of me cleaning my room over this commentary but yeah things are going great so far on the dose days the biggest thing i notice is just finding myself appreciating the little things in life more and just overall enjoying myself more in the present moment i have a vision for the future and this channel plays a big part in it and I understand it could take a couple years to achieve this vision that I have. But instead of putting my head down and working every moment of every day without a second thought, I'm able to take a step back and really enjoy the process. I think everyone has a vision for the type of person they want to be and just what they want to achieve in life. But 99% of our time is spent in the journey of achieving our visions. And when so much of our time is spent on the journey, we need to be able to enjoy that process and microdosing has really been helping me love that process. I'll admit, on non-dose days, I don't have quite that pizzazz that I do on dose days, but overall life quality has definitely increased with microdosing. I thought at the beginning of this challenge, I might think microdosing was working way better than it actually was, just because I'm such a strong believer in psychedelics. That'd be almost like a placebo effect, but I don't think this is a placebo effect at all. I'll most likely only do one or two more check-ins from now until the final conclusion on day 30, so stay tuned. All right guys, so it is done. The 30-day challenge is over. 
and I didn't do any check-ins from day 15 to day 30 just because I, I felt like it'd be kind of pointless and I'd just be saying the same thing that I am right now. Um, but yeah, this, this challenge has definitely been a positive thing for me. That doesn't mean it'll be a positive thing for you. These things, they affect everybody differently and people who microdose, they don't always experience benefits and sometimes experience drawbacks as I will explain with the graphs here in a minute. Um, yeah, this has been great for me. I have been more productive than I ever have in my entire life. And, you know, that might not be totally because of the microdose. Um, I've had more work to do than I ever had in my life. Um, with college, I'm heading into finals, so I have a lot of work to do. I've also been doing a lot of work with the channel. And I also have a part-time job, too. So that's also needed to take into account. I'm literally doing some form of work pretty much all day, every day. And with microdosing, that has been not much of a problem. And I've really been able to enjoy that process. Um, you know, I, like I said, I have a vision and with my life. And, you know, sometimes you've got to sit down and work. And that's going to be a process. And with such, with the process taking up such a big amount of time, you need to enjoy that process and enjoy the process of life. And microdosing has definitely helped me enjoy that process. So I remember at the beginning of like the, the day one, I was like, yeah, I feel so in the present moment. I feel amazing right now. That might've just been me like hyped up for day one of the microdose. Um, <laughs> Cause I was like, yeah, I'm like, so in the present moment, um, I feel great right now. And it's like, it's like, I was like really experiencing effects from the microdose. And the whole point of the microdose is you don't really like feel any effects. It's just like kind of sub perceptual in the background. Yeah, day one, I was like, yeah, I feel so good. And microdosing, it's not really like that. Um, day one, I was definitely a little bit placeboed and I was really hyped up. But yeah, I microdosing, it just, it's the sub perceptual thing. It's looking back on it and realizing how much better you've been. You know, microdosing might take um, a normal day that you grade a five out of 10 and might make that a seven or eight out of 10. All right, guys, so now I am going to go over the graph from the beginning of this video. This is the microdose and benefits from a Canadian survey conducted in 2018. And I'm sorry if the pie chart looks a little weird and not straight. I don't know what's wrong with it. Now, this graph is not an exact copy from the survey. There are only four different pieces of the pie, and the real survey had like eight or nine. But I noticed a lot of the reasons people found microdosing beneficial in the survey were very similar, so I decided to group them into these four categories. So the number one benefit microdosers reported were cognitive benefits. This includes stuff like enhanced creativity, higher overall energy levels, and better focus. And I can say I definitely experienced some of these. I wouldn't say I was particularly more creative, but I definitely had more energy mentally, which allowed me to get more work done. The second most popular benefit was an increased mood and outlook on life, and this also includes self-efficacy. So this benefit here was definitely the most profound benefit I got out of microdosing. My mood on a dose day was always great, and I really enjoyed the process of everything in life much more. The next highest benefit was with symptom reduction slash self-care, and this includes the people whose main reason for microdosing was to combat their depression or anxiety or something or other mental disorder. And I don't really suffer from any of these currently, and that's not why I microdosed. But due to the increased mood and better outlook on life I had, I can definitely see how microdosing has been an amazing medicine for people with these conditions. And the last one is social benefits, and I think this one speaks for itself. And to be honest, with quarantine, I hardly even talk to anyone, so I can't say I experienced this benefit. But again, with the extra pizzazz you have when microdosing, I can totally see how this would help in social situations. So now we're going to look at the drawbacks or concerns people had when microdosing. So the biggest drawback people had was mental discomfort slash cognitive interference. And this can include things like headaches, which I did have one day myself when I calculated my dose wrong and took more than I normally had been. And this also includes stuff like increased anxiety, inability to focus, just because you're so overstimulated, worsened mood, uh, basically the opposite of what some of these cognitive benefits were. And this just goes to show that microdosing does not work for everyone. 
so you can't just go into it thinking it'll be this magical pill to living a better life. So the next biggest concern is just the fact that it's illegal and there is a negative stigma around it. That's definitely a major concern for many people, but obviously with psychedelics being a main topic on my channel, I don't give a fuck quite frankly. So for me, I don't care about this one. Next we have physical discomfort, and this can include things like just overall excessive body stimulation and nausea, as mushrooms especially are notorious for causing nausea and body overload. When I miscalculated my dose and took almost twice what I normally would, I did experience some nausea. But on every other normal dose day, I was completely fine. A major part of microdosing is finding the perfect dose for you, and that takes some experience to find. A perfect dose for one person might be 0.13 grams, while a perfect dose for someone else might be 0.10. It takes time to perfect your amount, and while it might not seem like such a minuscule amount can make a difference, I promise you it can. So the last one is labeled other, and this can include things like uncertainty of effect, and this can be especially true for someone who has never used psychedelics to trip before, as they are taking a substance that can make them trip and hallucinate, but they're trying to calculate a dose so where they don't trip. That's going to conclude this video. Um, really hope you enjoyed this content. Um, hope I helped you in one way, shape, or form with this video. Uh, as always, guys, have a great day and peace. Thank you.